Aaron and Melissa here for Truth Stream Media, and in doing further research on the Rockefeller Foundation for a book we're working on, again, we've come up with something creepy, non-related, but we felt the need to report on it nonetheless. This is a publication that they commissioned, the Rockefeller Foundation commissioned back in June 2012 from the TELUS Institute and Sustainalytics called Worker and Social Equity in Food Agriculture. I'm going to get to the report in a minute, but I did some looking up on these companies. First of all, Sustainalytics, that should stick out to you right away. But TELUS Institute actually had this as their mission. At this perilous juncture in human affairs, TELUS Institute works to advance a global civilization of sustainability, equity, and well-being through research, education, and action. And then they go on to say, we are at the cusp of a new historical epoch, the planetary phase of civilization that binds the world's people and the biosphere into a single community of fate. And they call this the Great Transition, which they reference at multiple places all over this website. They capitalize it and they put it in italics like it's a real big deal. These are the people that the Rockefeller Foundation pays to write their reports. Anyway, so that's fun. But then you get in here and this whole report is about analyzing food markets and they're bringing up all of these different companies. They're talking about how Walmart's not doing so well these days and how great Whole Foods is doing with their organics. And one of the things they actually mention in here as an idea is to bring together progressive companies for social impact footprinting. And it says one group that might be disposed toward this and related approaches are the progressive companies that have been acquired by multinationals. And it mentions Ben and Jerry's at Unilever, Cascadian Farms at General Mills, Boca Foods at Kraft, Stonyfield Farm at Group Danon, and so on. They have a good sense of internal opportunities to dialogue with major companies about progressive approaches. And so there's a lot of really important stuff going on here with the Rockefellers who are obviously studying the trends of food, investing in these markets, and directing which way things are going to go. Now, this is kind of a multi-dimensional thing. We've got to put our thinking hats on because at a time when they're making such a big deal about the growing population and the challenge to feed everybody, they're making food a commodity with more and more derivatives trading and betting up the prices and, and particularly in food futures and not just the old-fashioned food futures where farmers would just basically bet on having a supply and have an investment there. And while this is going on, this big GMO battle is happening. And the Rockefeller Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates, all these players are really invested heavily in Monsanto and biotech big and time. doing U.S. AID food aid uh, based on genetically modified. But at the same time, the organic game is becoming a big business because people who are aware of this and uh, perhaps have the money to spend on organics or trying to avoid GMO foods in particular and also stuff with pesticides and seeking out responsibly raised stuff. But when you look more and more at these connections, it begins to look not really good for some of the biggest organic companies. Now, here's just a piece of the controversy that's been going on lately. Remember when Whole Foods, Organic Valley, and Stonyfield met with the USDA with Tom Vilsack, who's the Secretary of Agriculture, and met with Monsanto and the other biotech giants and ironed out what they called coexistence in, that, in the particular case of the alfalfa crop, but more generally on uh, genetically modified. And in particular, we have interest with Stonyfield because the CEO, who just stepped down, but the main founder and CEO, Gary Hirschberg, has been donating to Vilsack's campaign as has uh, one of the high up members of Whole Foods, and is also connected to... The Rockefeller Foundation. This is something else we actually found just a little bit ago. Apparently in May 2004, there was a new initiative to provide a path forward for transforming food and ag policy. And this is a press release on the Rockefeller Foundation website. It's released by them. Um, and basically, they formed this thing called AGRI, like AGRI, but the AG is capitalized. And among the members of this group are Dan Glickman, former secretary of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. He was there during the mid-90s all the way through the early 2000s when GMO was really proliferating through our food supply big time. And right after him, you've got who? Gary Hirschberg, chairman and president, CEO of Stonyfield Farm. And Hirschberg makes a statement here that I'm pretty disgusted by. He says, 
we must move beyond the political knee-jerk defense of traditional agriculture and face the need for change armed with real-world scientific facts and analysis that agree can provide. Now, that's what he said. So we need to move beyond the knee-jerk defense of traditional agriculture, actual farming, what we actually used to do for thousands of years before we started genetically modifying all of our food, and face the need for change armed with scientific facts. And what he's really seemingly saying there, in my opinion, is armed with science. We're going to put some science in your food. Stop just defending your traditional agriculture. Well, he's talking about backing the reports put out by these biotech giants and by the kind of people listed down here right as here. part of this foundation. Yeah, the Ford Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, W.K. Kellogg, the McKnight Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, of course, and the Walton Family Foundation. Well, what's going on so. with these Rockefeller reports we're reading to you now and hundreds, thousands of other, others is that they're shaping policy by fielding these reports and they recommend the science so-called that's funded directly from these biotech giants and they push it and so you got this big organic food industry leader really playing ball with them he did it before on the alfalfa thing and then we had the whole incident with prop 37 where people were trying to make mandatory labeling of gmo in california and there was $50 million spent from companies like PepsiCo and Kraft, not to mention Monsanto, Safeway, Coca-Cola, General Mills, ConAgra, etc., etc., who all put up money to oppose mandatory labeling and keep us in the dark about what's in the food. But meanwhile, they've got these big organic companies who are heavily marketed, that are recognizable in Whole Foods and other grocery stores, who you know, in all name are for responsible food, organic food against GMO, but they're funded by people who oppose the labeling. And, you know, they talk about Ben and Jerry's at uh, Unilever, and these people all made the so-called boycott list. We reported earlier on True Stream Media about Ben and Jerry's sticky GMO position, and there's some amazing artwork by Melissa Melton, by the way, <laughs> all original. Uh, but Ben and Jerry's really got punished by the Prop 37 stuff because they made the traders list, even though the CEO has been in favor of labeling and testified on it. So they kind of play both sides, and they've been trying to improve their position, A, by supposedly starting to source non-GMO, and uh, they were the original opposers of the RBGH. But also, you've got Ben & Jerry's as part of this B Corporation. It's a new way for corporations to be socially responsible by signing on to this pact where you agree to have sustainable practices, uh, not necessarily anti-GMO, but maybe that's part of it. But you got all these sustainable and green foundation people who are behind it, front groups really, for sustainable causes. And they've got this really creepy B Corp declaration of interdependence rather than independence. Uh, that is creepy. And you really find a lot of these groups have interdependence well, I just contracts. told you about the new planetary phase of our civilization. So, <laughs> Well, back on the 200th anniversary in 1976, uh, a bunch of globalist uh, Rockefeller type people sponsored a declaration of inter dependence for the new planetary era oh, really? but the main funder of this b corporation which is now socially trendy a uh, way to get corporations to be responsible the top founder of the whole thing is the rockefeller foundation who donated up to five million dollars and you've got people too like this guy anthony bug levine who is a former managing director of the rockefeller foundation and he's also the CEO of Nonprofit Finance Fund. And basically, they find ways to market and finance causes and, you know, pursue this whole philanthropic, socially responsible agenda. So, really interesting how they play the organic food label and how they also fund the biggest corporations and their continued dominance and really their defiling of our food supply. And that's why we have such an issue with this big federal now federal labeling war that's going on about whether or not we have the right to know what's in our food because now we have all these companies like representatives from Walmart, General Mills, Pepsi, Frito-Lay, Coca-Cola and all those meeting with the FDA back in January about a federal labeling mandate as if they really are on our side after they just spent all that money 
fighting it. Well, the truth is they don't want to have to fight it in other states because it's a costly affair. They spent $50 million on it. However, the other issue is if they get their foot in the door first at the federal level, then we're definitely going to have problems with what kind of law we end up with that's going to trump. Because here they actually straight up say, we should be wary of any compromise deal at the federal level, one that would preempt the passage of meaningful state GMO laws that have real teeth. We don't want to end up with a law like the one Japan passed in 2001 that exempted GMO foods except for corn and soy from being labeled and allowed 5% GMO content in individual ingredients and all this other stuff. So they were able to slide all this stuff in there so that it's, yeah, kind of labeled, but also basically not labeled at all. And so that's where we are with this. We don't want to have that. And people like Gary Hirschberg are scary not only because on the surface they represent you know, this wholesome organic image of food, and yet they're aligning themselves, he's aligning himself with the Rockefeller Foundation, joining their boards, he's meeting with the USDA on things, all this coexists and everything. And also, I just decided to do a little more research in him, and I found this, and I just want to throw this in there for the record. He also spearheaded this thing called Climate Counts, which is a nonprofit campaign that scores companies annually on the basis of their voluntary action to reverse climate change. And when you check out this website, it says, still don't believe in climate change? We don't claim to be scientists, so we rely on information that comes from people who know what they're doing. And one of those people, people, is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is under the auspices of the UN. Well, the IPCC is the biggest driver of climate change, but they don't do their own science either. It's no, all they just cherry political pick. science. Exactly. They well, they don't even conduct one. studies, they just field studies. And they cherry pick those studies, exactly. And so, you've got that, and then when you come down and look at their advisory board, well, look who's on it. Why, Bart Houlihan from the B Corporation, which Aaron just got in showing you, is Rockefeller. And they've also got some of the other people on that list, like 1% for the Planet. You've got Pew Center on Global Climate Change and a bunch of other green-looking stuff, World Wildlife Fund. So there's Gary Hirschberg uh, starting one of these up, which is all based on the idea of... We've got a nexus of one-worlders who are using environmental causes to create a planetary system. And you've also got the corporate interests who are just trying to greenwash themselves and look responsible when they're funding some of the most irresponsible. And then there's the higher levels where those interests meet together. But it's just tricky to follow all this because even though I support organic and we've been protesting all the genetically modified stuff because of all the dangers, it also, you know, puts out of business a lot of these local farmers because it costs a lot of money to be certified, to be certified. as organic. And then you find some of the big players aren't even following the rules on that. Like Walmart. Didn't you find some stuff? Yeah, there's been Walmart? a lot of talk about Walmart's organic being less than it's cracked up to be. And uh, you really got to begin to ask questions when the power meets at the head of the table and you've got a big organic as well as a big agra and a big biotech interest. Well, exactly. And you've got Tom Vilsack at the USDA. And so the USDA is the one that's certifying organic to begin with. I mean, it's all we have right now in so many ways. So we yeah, have exactly. to trust it. But look who it's coming from. It's coming from the USDA. So how much do you even really trust it? I mean, it's a scary prospect. What are we going to do? Because this food is getting dangerous. It is getting dangerous. I mean, I just saw this. I'm, I'm going to do a report on this separate, but see if I can hold that up. Can you even see that on there? It's gluten-free grains. Yeah, gluten-free grains. This was something we picked up at the HEB checkout, the grocery store here in Texas. The checkout had a whole pamphlet with coupons and everything. Like I guess they put these out all the time. And this one's all about gluten-free. Because it's become such a pervasive issue, and I've written about this on TrueStream and previously at InfoWars, th this kind of stuff has become so pervasive that every it's everywhere now. Everybody has an intolerance to these grains and these foods. It's a huge issue because all our food is changing. It's being politicized. And this is not your grandma's food or even your daddy's food. I mean. At all. Well, and everybody is having these, these food allergies are skyrocketing off the charts. I've looked at the data for this. I mean all over the place. Little kids are having so many more food allergies than ever before in the history of them keeping data on it. And then you've got all these people with gluten intolerance. I mean, all this stuff is going on. And no one is, no one's taking the time to sit and think, why do we have all of these sudden huge surge in food allergies and food issues and people who have all kinds of sicknesses and illnesses based on what they eat? There's obviously a reason behind it. It didn't just suddenly happen. Well, 
that wraps it up for this one but there's a lot of important issues that are tied to this and we're going to keep looking at it stay tuned truestreammedia.com we got a lot more reports coming thanks Bye, for watching